right, welcome everybody. Um, I have scanned this painting into uh, my computer at 200 dpi. That's the default setting for my scanner. So I just left it as is. And I opened up the painting in Photoshop Elements 8. Now, Photoshop Elements 8, it came with my scanner. So it's a not so expensive software unlike uh, Photoshop, um, the regular Photoshop, but it does the job for what I need it to do, so that's why I'm using Elements. So right now, I just started using the stamp tool to basically cover up all the pencil drawing lines that I created when I first uh, sketched onto the paper before I started painting. So this process takes a, a good couple of minutes because I had a lot of uh, deep pencil lines on my painting. And this is a pre-recorded video. So if I still sound like I'm uh, William Shatner, it's, it's because I'm trying to think of what I was actually doing at the time of uh, the time I was doing the digital painting. So whenever you're using a stamp tool, just make sure you're using the correct color that you're stamping and you're painting onto. So this process is a little bit tedious, but it is very necessary if you want a clean background. digital tools I'm using besides the Photoshop Elements is a Wacom tablet. I'm sorry, it's a Wacom Cintiq. It's an LCD tablet. And I'm just cleaning up the lines for the buildings. I didn't want any distinguishable lines on the buildings or the background or the, you know, the background, I don't know, the horizon line. So I'm uh, making this super perfect. This isn't going into any production, but for educational sake, it's the, the best I would do. If, and to make sure you save often enough, just in case your program crashes or your computer crashes and you don't lose all your work. I can't stress that enough. 
and make sure you also save multiple copies of the file just in case you once again if the file gets corrupted or something happens that it didn't save while you're actually working you have that backup copy So in Japan, when they're doing anime, if they're using, let's say, the the Redis uh, software package, they would be doing this in Traceman or Traceman HD, which is a scanning program, but it also has filters and it also has uh, background cleanup and cell cleanup, meaning it can get rid of specs and dirt and also there's a stamp tool I believe that you can also do this processing. If they were using Toon Boom they would probably just use Harmony and just clean up they just clean up the background plate. I'm just filling in any spots that might seem awkward to have on to a uh, it's supposed to be let's say like sand or dirt they could just be like giant water spots but I just tried to to fill them in as, as best as I could So this stage would be considered a uh, background cleanup. And the reason you would usually do this, I'm sure uh, background painters in Japan who do anime background paintings are way more talented and have way more experience than I do painting so their paintings are probably on point but you do lose something when you're scanning images into your computer so you have to kind of digitally bring them back to life so you have to change the the hue and the saturation the levels meaning the the darks the lights and the mids and uh, just add effects or like possibly lighting effects to your background paintings so they look uh, more like the original and or enhanced So I'm just checking to see if I missed any lines. And I guess I spotted some.
So I'm still checking once again to see if I miss any spots. I zoom out and zoom in. So my eyes are just darting around the image to make sure that I have covered everything that I needed to cover. Now I didn't want to change the painting too much. I didn't want to really add any elements or reshape those branches to make them look better. So I decided to start messing with the levels. So I, I open up a level layer, which is an effect layer, and I'm just adjusting the midtones. Now the brightness and contrast. And now hue and saturation. So you can totally change the look of your painting. And when I pause for a long time, it just means that I'm staring and debating which way I should have the painting look. So you can see right now it's a overly saturated a bit compared to the original and you can see all the different things you can do with just the hue alone so now it's I'm adding a photo filter to make the colors pop and with the photos filters you can change more or less like the season tone you can make it like, look like it's summertime or fall or spring or even um, not so much winter colors if there's still leaves on the trees depending on the trees but you can make it look like a, a bright summer day the overall blue cast. I could tone it down. And I decided to just have an overall blue cast. So now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to block out some of the background. And I'm using the wand tool to select areas. So I just use, so I use it to select large areas. And then I go in with my lasso tool and try to grab all those areas within one mat. Now I'm not trying to have the edges too sharp. So I'm grabbing the sky, I'm grabbing the buildings, and I'm grabbing a little bit of the ground in the background. So it looks okay to me. And right now I'm grabbing a blur effect.
And if you can see in my preview window, you can see how the blur effect is going to affect the background. So instead of doing it on the original, I decided to duplicate the layer so I have a safe backup that isn't blurred already. And then on this layer, the duplicate layer, I can blur it. So the reason I did that is to give it a sort of a depth of field, even though it's totally faked. And if I was going to do this in a production, I would have made different background plates, meaning I would have made the sky one plate, the buildings another plate, the ground another plate, and the trees in the foreground another plate. So I can uh, do a parallax camera move, or I can blur out the background and not have to deal with any limitations of just a flat plain background. So off camera, I'm messing with, uh, I inverted the, the mask, so now I can affect the foreground. And right here I'm saving the mask just so I could, uh, well, I'm saving the selection so I can go back and reuse it if I want to. So now I'm just changing um, the different blend modes and messing with the opacity so I could mix the original with the new version that I created. And I want those trees in the foregrounds to be relatively dark, but not too dark, if that makes sense. I want the foreground and the background to have a separation. That's why I blurred. I blurred the background a bit. So instead of using the original plate, I instead of using the original background plate, I put in a gray background underneath it so I can change the how much brightness there is without messing with the brightness itself. So I'm duplicating the layer again, just in case I mess up. And I'm going to use a smudge tool just to smudge some of the areas that are too sharp with the blur. Let's do the photo filters again. And 
is just constantly saving. And I'm just analyzing the image to see what I like and what I don't like. So I'm just drawing in the edges because the edges seem to have been a little cropped off. So I'm trying to get the painting all the way to the edge. Now I'll probably eventually end up cropping this image anyway, but just in case. So now I'm just zooming in and you can see how different the scanned image with all these effects on it have changed the painting. So if you look at the original compared to the affected one, there's a stark difference. So now I'm just messing around with more blending modes to see what works for me. So as you can see, the different blending modes just alone can change the way that you might feel about, the way you might feel when you're looking at the painting. I'm just analyzing the image to see if I like it or not. And now we skipped over to um, Sketchbook Pro. I exported the image as a PNG. I'm sorry, no. I opened up a version of the PSD and added in some characters of mine just so I can have a, a feel of the depth of how characters might look within the scene itself. So all I simply did was just import my characters who are already PNGs that had the alpha channel on it. And I just popped them into the scene. And I did this one to see uh, how the depth of field, how it feels, and how it will background would look with characters on it. So I'm just using an airbrush with a line tool and just creating more or less sun rays that are coming through the trees. So I create the sun rays solid. And then I just change the blend mode. And 
and just lower the opacity. And then I just erase some of the light rays so they're not on the foreground character so much as they are on the background. Like the trees. And I'm just softening them up. So they're barely visible, but they're there. And then for the new layer and an airbrush, I'm just going to add in some shadows. So since the sun is an ambient light, it's pretty much everywhere, and it creates lots and lots of shadows. And it all depends on where the sun is and where it has shifts to. If it's in the east or the west, if it's at high noon, I'm just trying to fill in those branches that are constantly have bothered me throughout this whole lesson. Just darkening the tree trunk, darkening the leaves a bit. Just trying to create form, pedo, skido, uh, light and dark. And now I'm just going to use the same airbrush and add in some highlights.
screen. I'm just analyzing the picture, seeing what I'm missing. I'll check in the original with my highlights and my shadows. Just gonna pull the shadows a little down, a little bit more opacity. Checking to see which blend mode works best. This version of Sketchbook only has four blend modes. I believe the newer one has more. And I'm just making sure I'm locking those layers so I don't overwrite them. A quick save. And now I have a, a brush that I made a while ago that's uh, windless frames. So I made two brushes a while back. And you can see the default window frame. It's basically a square with a frame around it. And these brushes are weird because I made them uh, a bit big. So I have to shrink this all the way down. So just with a simple click. With just a simple click, I have a window frame. I'm going to use my ruler just so I can keep everything straight. Much like I did when I was painting the windows with the dashes, I just want to use the ruler to keep it straight. Since I have two different types of windows, I have two different types of shapes as well. So one's more square, the other one's more rectangle.
now I'll just soft erase part of the windows that are behind the tree. Okay, they got used a hard eraser. And the reason it's not working is because I have that ruler on. And then I'm going to change the opacity and bring it down. Just so you can barely, barely see it. Find different blend modes to see what works best, but ultimately I have to just change the opacity. And that's going to wrap up this class for background painting. I hope you learned something, and I hope uh, you can do a better job than I can. So that's your lesson, and. Uh, Hope you enjoy the rest of the class. Thanks.